Hi. <laughs> How is everyone? Uh, do we uh, do we do the? Uh, yeah, I, I think the settings are good. You guys see me out there? Anybody see me? Um, just asking. Not again. Not great at this just yet. So I'm testing out everything, making sure it's kosher, it's good to go. If uh, you can see me, and if you can hear me, it'd be great to let me know so that I know that we can start Mark's virtual bar trivia. Wow, what a ring to it. Sounds like I've been playing this thing for years when, in, as a matter of fact, I haven't. I've been uh, kicking this idea around for about 24 hours. So um, I want to say thank you to um, my, my good buddies, Ed, Harold, and John Mariano for helping me cook this up uh, the last 24 hours. They're two of the best uh, people you'll ever meet. They're great fans and great in, in uh, the YouTube community, but they're just, they're, they're, they're just aces. They're great people, and they have great taste in music, too. So we'll get to the trivia. This is like going to a bar. So, um, by the way, Look, I know, I know what the jokes are. I know what the jokes are going to be, okay? Yes, it's a tight shirt. This is the only green shirt that I had in the house, and um, I figured I'd celebrate with you all. So it's St. Patrick's Day. Um, I usually don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day like because it's usually like a, a Wednesday or a Tuesday, and everybody's like, let's get hammered. And I'm like, but it's Tuesday. I, got, I do that on the weekends. So, um, But this year I was actually going to go see uh, Flogging Molly. They were going to do a show downtown, and I was going to go with the whole radio station crew and just have a whole day of it. But then things happened, and the world changed, and now here we are in our isolation. <coughs> All by ourselves. Somebody just got a little closer because she could hear uh, attention happening. And the only person that I know that is more of a whore for attention than Molly the Wonder Dog is this guy. So why are we doing this? Um, first of all, I am a whore for attention. And I like entertaining y'all. Don't really have the opportunity to do that outside of my place. So I decided let's cook up a fun game show where people can come. And that gets us to reason number two is that... I see y'all on social media, I see my friends, I see fans, I see people who I've never met, but they're saying, hey, I'm out of income for the next couple months, maybe, maybe it's just a couple weeks, maybe it's more than that. I don't know how long all this stuff's going to last, but I know that a lot of people are getting pinched where it hurts in the pocketbook, and sometimes I like to come in and be an angel investor in somebody's life and give them a few bucks and help out, and I figured, well, let's make it fun. Let's make it competitive, and maybe I'm not helping the right people out here, but I thought this would be a fun way to do it. So I'm going to ask a bunch of trivia questions in a little bit here, and we're going to do two sessions. Each session is 10 questions, and each question you get correct, you get five bucks. I'll tell you how to get a correct question just a little bit. Before we get into the bar trivia aspect of this show, you good? You good out there? Everybody doing okay? Everybody making the best of what we can? Because that's really all you can do in a situation like this. You know, it's a it's a scary it's a scary thing going on out there right now. And the problem is nobody really knows exactly what to do. There's protocols, there's precautions we can take, but we don't know exactly what the game plan is. We're not exactly sure when this is going to end. And I think that's the biggest thing is that you can take a self-quarantine for a couple weeks, for a month, and you can say, okay, if it's starting here and it's ending here, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to come up with some new creative endeavor. I'm going to start pelotoning. I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever, but we don't know when it ends. Like, remember when you're a kid and you were so excited for for Christmas to get there, and oh man, it's three weeks away. It feels like it's so long, but at least we knew when Christmas happened. It wasn't like your parents were like, hey kids, we don't know how long Advent is gonna last for. It could last into March, so buckle up. We knew that we had to go through a process and that it was gonna end. And so right now we're all like Tim Robbins and Shawshank, we're, we're climbing through the, the poo, and we're hoping that we get to that beach in Mexico soon. So we're not there yet, not going to be there for a little bit. And in the meantime, let's just all continue to support each other in any way that we can. Because once we get out of this thing, you know we're going to get some bad movies about it. You know it's going to happen. You know that there's going to be some awful love story. I can write it for you right now. People meet online, and they've never met in real life, and they can't meet in real life now, And but they're talking, and they're vibing. It's a you've got mail situation. And then they finally get to meet, and oh, no, yeah, it just didn't work out. Or did it? They meet, doesn't go well the first time, and so they go their separate ways, and they keep thinking, man, I just can't get her. I can't get him off my mind. And then the last line in the movie is going to be, you know what, now that I can... 
go outside and go to public places and be around people again, the only time I feel quarantined is when I'm not with you. That's the line. I wrote it for you. You're welcome, Hallmark. <laughs> okay, so here's how Mark's virtual bar trivia is going to work. And again, this is a process. So y'all watching today, uh, you signed up for an experiment is what you did. This is an experiment, so put your lab coats on. I have no idea how this is gonna work, if it's gonna be fair, if it's gonna be well run, well judged. Some of those are in my control, but most of them aren't because the format that I have for this is we're gonna do two rounds tonight, okay? Each round, and they're just random questions from all different walks of life, pop culture, facts about random shit. It's just, it's a hodgepodge of everything. So what, we, what we're looking at here is I'm gonna ask a question to the field, okay? First comment that I see get it right, that person wins. And we'll do a couple test runs so everybody's prepared. Um, it could be about anything, and as soon as I see a correct answer, I'm going to get the name, and I'm going to write the name down. And then at the end of the round, I'm going to make sure I have everybody who got a correct answer, either their Venmo or their PayPal, however you want me to send you your, uh, your bucks, uh, we'll do it that way. By the way, I don't even know if this is legal, what I'm doing. So let's just all say that I'm donating to your favorite charity, which you can't. Take the money and donate it to your favorite charity. Whatever you want to do with it. I don't care. You, you, <laughs> you're probably going to buy booze with it, aren't you? Yep. Uh, that's what I would do. So that's how it's going to work. And here's my one rule, though. Because I want, I want more people to win. Um, I, I don't want one person to just completely run the table. So here's how we're going to do it. You get $5 for every correct question you answer. If the same person answers a question correct two times in a row, if they get two questions in a row right, then you can sit the third one out because you can't get three in a row. Uh, if you answered it first again, then I'm just gonna go to the next person down. I want multiple people to get a chance to win something. So we're gonna go through 10 uh, questions in this round, 10 questions in the next round, and then as a bonus, I'm gonna ask you a couple personal questions about me, and if anybody can get it right, then you also are gonna win $5. So $110 is on the line, right? It's, it's, it's all my money, and it's coming out of your mouth, Molly. God, she ate so much today. She, I know she looks cute, but jeez. It's like, it's like feeding a hippopotamus. She just does not stop eating. It's crazy. It's a lot like her dad. Okay. Hi, Amy. Uh, Amy says she doesn't want any money. She just wants a shout-out. What, uh, what if that was the gag here? I was like, hey, guys, I'm giving away cash. I'm kidding. I'm just going to shout you out. Uh, you're going to get some cash, but maybe, maybe. And it's not going to happen like it may, you may not get the Venmo tonight, but it'll happen. You know, I'm going to do the show and hopefully it goes well. And then I'll have a couple more of these and Molly and I will call it a night and then tomorrow I'll get to business. But um, I can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. And I know a lot of people are streaming right now. I know there's a lot of shows you could be watching right now. You could be binging something. You could be watching a movie. You could uh, be checking anybody else's content out right now. But you probably heard money, but you also came to see me. And I appreciate y'all checking in with me. So let's give this thing a shot. So here we go. Um, I, I pride myself on looking at the camera because I'm like a professional host sometimes, but I'm going to have to cheat and go to the comment section, and I might need a note or two on the question, so just bear with me. We're, this, it's an experiment, guys. Get the goggles on. The Bunsen burners are ready. So here we go. Here we go. So your first question, again, th th these are some practice questions, okay? So nobody's winning any cash for this. Maybe I'll give you a dollar. I'm really nice. Okay, one dollar for the first person, for the first comment that can tell me where did I go to college? All right, and we're looking for it, looking for that first correct answer. Some people have bad lag times and their streams, you know, aren't as good as other people, so we'll just, well, that's how we have to play the game, you know? Um, looking, nobody's gotten it right. Is is anybody, <laughs> anybody out there? This <laughs> is... Uh, okay, there it is. Will McLean got it. Will McLean. Will McLean got the got the practice one. I'm writing your name down here, Will, just in case. There's all the Wake Forest. Ooh, good. We got a little bit of a delay, so this will be <laughs> this will be fun. <laughs> uh, it, it really it's it, it's a question of how fast you can type because you know, and I know people can cheat if they wanted to. You could Google where did Mark go to college and come back with the right answer. But um, Peggy, did you type FSU? You know I didn't go to, apparently everybody else in my friend circle went to FSU, but I didn't. 
It's like I went to Wake, Makuga went to Penn State, Knapsack went to Pismo Beach College, and everybody else I know went to Florida State, but not this guy. Okay, Gray Dog, UF, really? UF. Uh, thank you, Jer Jared Simpson thought I went to Harvard, so thanks for that. Okay, uh, do one more test. So everybody relax, get your, get your fingers ready to go. It's an easy one, but it's a goodie. What is the name of my favorite band? I'm pretty sure somebody's going to get this one right pretty quick. So, um, yeah, you got to be first, guys. You got to be the very first person I see that comments it. And it, it, maybe you're looking at a different stream than I am. I'm looking at the YouTube live chat. So, you know, um, sorry if your streams are behind. I can't, I, I, I'm not sure what, what to do about it. We're just trying to have fun here. So the question has been asked, and Mike Brower, first one. Way to go, Mike. Mike Brower got it. The answer is, of course, the mighty Van Halen. So, um, uh, Zach, sorry, it's not Weezer. Robin, it's not Pantera, but both great bands in their own right. It's fun for me seeing the chat just blow up because you guys know me that well. <laughs> okay, so should we do one more test, or are we ready to get into this thing? I think we're, I think we're about ready to get into this thing. So, um Again, if, if there's a lag, I'm so sorry, but this is this is how we play the game. And look, I'm open to suggestions too. So after we we play tonight, maybe it, it should be a DM, shoot me an email, and like, hey, I think maybe you can fix it like this or like this, and um, we'll tinker. But I'm not looking to go high tech with this thing, first of all, because I wrote Ed and John last night, and they're like, oh, you can get like four people in the same, and I'm like, guys, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I just I'm I'm the attention whore. I need to be on the whole screen. And, you know, I don't know how tech savvy I'm going to become during this quarantine, but uh, this is what we got right now. So it's bar trivia. So I think we'll, uh, I think we'll go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead and, and, and do it. And this is how we always kick off a session of bar trivia is we cheers. And by the way, if you're toasting somebody, if you're with somebody right now, um, hopefully it's not more than 10 people. But if you're looking, when you, when you cheers, look them in the eye. Okay, look them in the eye and then touch the glass and then take a sip because if you don't according to a family member of mine um it's bad sex for seven years yeah let that sink in that's all it is is eye contact you miss you miss an eye contact bad sex for seven years now again it's not going to change my life all that much but maybe someone you love so all right here we go first question five dollars is on the line not going to tell you what the category is you just got to hear it and go i hope they're not complaining about the sound okay which late night talk show host had a segment called the top 10 all right for five bucks it's on the line here we go nervous nervous waiting for that first correct answer a little bit of a lag so here we go yeah only seven years for that talk show host top 10 and I need a complete answer. Here we go. It's not Kimmel. Peggy Gubins got it. Peggy Gubins. All right, Peggy. Congratulations. Peggy Gubins now to David Letterman is the answer. Peggy Gubins, thank you. Uh, well done. Um, now they all start piling in. Everybody's, everybody's got an answer now. Okay, so take a break. Clear it. Your next question. Big news today in the world of free agency. Do you guys see Tom Brady's going somewhere? He's going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's not the question. The question is Tom Brady formerly played football for what university? Which university did Tom Terrific play football for? He wasn't, you know, the biggest prospect coming out of college. He was, as a matter of fact, a sixth round draft pick. But say he made it work out okay. He won a championship for each round that he got passed up on. So, Patriots fans, you got nothing to hang your head about. 20 years of greatness. Maybe the best run ever. Michigan, there it is. Clint DeFada. Clint DeFada got it. It was Michigan. Clint DeFada got it. So, uh, congratulations to Clint and to Peggy. Here's how we're going to do the uh, Venmo PayPal situation. Is At the end of the round, uh, we're going to give everybody a little breather, and I'm going to get... I'm just going to ask you to comment with your Venmo handle or your PayPal handle then. So wait until the end of the uh, round, and then we'll get into it. So, all right, $5 has been won twice. And the third question is, 
1993, which singing group teamed up with Salt and Peppa for the hit What a Man? What a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Love that song. And I love this singing group that teamed up with Salt and Peppa. Salt and Peppa was great. Sean Avery, did you get it before Clint? I saw I saw Clint was first. Sorry. I, I saw Clint. I don't know what I'm doing I'm doing the best I can here, you know? It's the thing, it's nice to have like a small enough amount of people that I think I trust everybody, but Peggy Goobins, again. Peggy Goobins got it. Well done, Peggy. Peggy is two for three. The answer was En Vogue. En Vogue. Great, great. 90s pop group. Free your mind? Are you kidding me? Great guitar work in there, too. Um, yeah, excuse you. Dog is napping. Well, it's better than her eating. All right, so down three, seven more to go. Here we go. Next question. This may sound familiar to movie trivia showdown fans because it is a movie question. In what year was the film Batman Returns released? In what year? Batman Returns. I remember people freaking out about this movie. Parents went nuts because you see a penguin bite a guy's nose and blood goes everywhere. And they were just... Parents could not believe that that would happen in a Batman movie. They were so pissed. It was hilarious. Okay, Peggy is on fire. The Great Merman got it. The Great Merman. Are you really a great mer? Are you Merman? Wow. The Great Merman got it. 1992 is the answer. The Great. It's fun writing that one down. Merman. Okay. God, man. You guys are. PJ Campbell. He's in the chat. Uh, Rachel Silvestrini. Kristen Smith. Janine the Machine is in the chat. I knew you Schmodown people would show up. I knew it. I knew if I said trivia, my friend Carol's in there. Uh, Dylan McCormick, longtime fan. Uh, <laughs> Dylan, I sorry you missed it. It's <laughs> Dylan's going 1992 like 20 times. So uh, okay, you guys, you guys are you guys are too much. I love y'all so much. Here we go. All right, so your fifth question, halfway through round number one, the only round in this round. Um, who holds the record for the most three pointers made? in an NBA season. You knew we were going to have sports questions here. So this is, this is bar trivia. This is bar trivia. It's, it's all different types of questions, not just one specific thing. If you, you study inner geekdom, that's great. But this is, we're expanding, OK? And uh, hey, hi, Dwayne. How are you? Say hi to the fans while we're waiting for that correct answer to come in. Uh, Sean Avery. Sean Avery with Steph Curry. And I'll tell you why. Clint, Clint, I saw you, and I should have clarified this. Need you to type Steph. And you, you got one right already. So let's give this one to Sean Avery. And that's on me, too. So I might send you another five bucks, too. But Sean Avery, you're getting the W here. But I'm putting a note by Clint. So, um, yeah, that's another. Glad that came up, guys. So if, um, if it's a question like, say the answer is Chicago, okay? You can't just type in. C H I. You got to type the whole thing. And if it's um, if I'm looking for a person's name, I need first and last name. Okay, Jeopardy. Alex Trebek lets that go all the time on Jeopardy. And I know we all love Alex Trebek. He's the best. But I mean, he lets you get away with a last name. Like who who did Aaron Burr shot uh, shoot? Uh, who was Hamilton? It's like yeah, you should you should have to know Alexander too. But anyway, all right, I'm done. Um, <laughs> Langley, did you really get that Batman question first? Did you did you really? Because I I didn't. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. So we can fight about this all day, but I think I know the only thing that's going to shut up a live chat is to ask the next question. So we have three different winners so far. Five questions in. In the hit show Friends, what was the name, the first name only, only need the first name of the Central Perk employee who had a crush on Rachel? All right. Uh, seen a seen a lot of people say that, that it's a different chat, so I I'm just going by my chat. I promise, <laughs> there's no favoritism. There's no favoritism here. So, um, you know, just doing the best I can. 
So if, as, as, if we can argue, as long as it's fair. Okay, uh, the answer's not Bonnie. It is, in fact, Gunther, and that was Ryan Kramer who got that first. Ryan Kramer, you got Gunther. Congratulations. Gunther, always the bridesmaid, never the bride for Gunther. Uh, but a really funny comedic actor. So, Elias, did you put Contra Club? That's, that, that's not even a character in Friends. Now, now you're just making me feel bad. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so now, moving on to the next one. You guys are doing great, by the way. Like, I'm seeing a lot of correct answers come in. So thank you guys. You guys are, are going great. And again, hey, we're, we're experimenting, man. We're messing around here. Okay? We're just, it's, it's sophomore year. What are you going to do? We're experimenting. It's the, it's the queue outside. We're all living through the queue. So let's do some experimenting. Next question. Uh, this is a good one. What is the name of the trap-laying echidna in the video game Sonic the Hedgehog 3? What is the name of the echidna? Not a lot of people know what echidnas are. And I'm 80% sure I'm pronouncing that right. So, uh, Carol, this is not way harder than Jeopardy. <laughs> this, is, this is gettable pop culture stuff. Uh, oh, hurry. Yes, it is a white forest chair. Thanks for asking. Okay. Name the echidna in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. And the answer is Knuckles. That is correct. D.T. Durr. D.T. Durr. Got that one right. Five bucks for D.T. Durr. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, the answer is Knuckles. The answer is Knuckles. I knew Sonic and I knew Tails and I was like... Who is that other, I think it was a bad guy, but didn't, did Sonic and Knuckles team up at some point? I think they did. I think they did. And I'm not sure I approved of it. All right, gang. Three questions left in round number one. This is a good one. And this might, this might be a Google search, or maybe you just want to guess it just because you could. What music artist has the record? for the single highest grossing concert tour of all time. So you go out, you play a bunch of shows. Who grossed the most amount of money? This is not adjusted for inflation. So you might want to pick someone a little more recent to catch my drift. Um, Amy's right, I do have two Wake Forest chairs. Uh, there was a game called Sonic and Knuckles, Kevin Marquez. I'm just not sure if it was Okay, seeing the guesses come in, it is not Adele, it is not Michael Jackson, it is not Queen, not Guns N' Roses. These are all great guesses. Somebody's going to have to Google it. Somebody's going to have to Google it. <laughs> These are all wrong. These are all wrong. These are all wrong. Where is it? I don't see it. I'm looking. I don't see it. Am I missing? There it is. There it is. There it is. Sachin Sepkata. Am I saying that right? Sachin Sepkata with Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran is the correct answer. Session Sepkata. Okay, good, good pool. Be honest, did you did you Google it or did you did you know it? I had to I had to Google that one. I was guessing it was gonna be um uh like Lady Gaga or Madonna or maybe U2 or the Stones or something like that. But yeah, Ed Sheeran. Ed freaking Sheeran. The kid the, the Game of Thrones kid. Remember he was in Game of Thrones and everybody lost their shit? And that was the day we all realized, hey, do we really trust Game of Thrones fans? <laughs> I'm a fan. I just You all take it pretty seriously. Okay. Two questions remain in round number one. Then there's another round, and it all resets. So uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different people. Seven different people have won $5 so far, which means more work for me to send that $5 individually. Peggy Gubin so far is the only one who's got more one than one question correct. So here we go. Your penultimate question in round number one. At the McDonald's drive-thru, the double quarter pounder meal is which number on the value menu? Which number on the value menu? The double quarter pounder. You can get it with cheese, you can get it without cheese. I usually just order the double quarter pounder and then I don't specify whether I want cheese or not because I want to be healthy and say no cheese, but I also secretly hope they put cheese on it. So um, a lot of people guessing JTE for this. Gannon got it. The answer is number four. Gannon, you got it. 
I don't know if you're related to Rich, but Gannon, you got it. It is number four. Well done, Gannon. Oh, and thank you, too. Thanks to Ed for kind of monitoring all this, this crazy stuff. I'm not... <laughs> I can't obviously afford to pay anybody to monitor the chat room because I'm <laughs> paying the people in the chat room. What a dork I am. Okay. John, it's not 69. The answer is... The answer is not 69. Can you imagine in the future, maybe? That, because McDonald's will be the only restaurant, and we pull up, and there's just all these menu options. So, all right. Last question in round number one. Here we go. Worldwide. What? And again, worldwide. Not domestic. Worldwide. What was the highest grossing film of the year 2000? In the year 2000. So either try to think of a movie that was big that came out in 2000, or you can try Googling it. But sometimes Google leads you astray. I did do a lot of research on this one. So, um, SJT original what? What? Come on, what? I'm doing my best here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hotel nerd. You want to challenge the McDonald's question? That was the other thing. No challenges. Sorry. I can't. <laughs> it's definitely number four. Okay. I ordered it. Um, embarrassingly recently. Okay, the answers are coming in and I'm not seeing it. Again, this is the year 2000, guys. This is the year 2000 worldwide. I saw the correct answer for domestic, but I've not seen until now Nick. Nick Norambuena got Mission Impossible 2. Mission Impossible 2 is the answer. Nick Norambuena. I love that name, Nick. Well done. Nick Norin Buema. All right. There you go. There you go, guys. That's round number one. Congratulations to uh, Nick. Yeah, it was Mission Impossible 2. So domestically, I think it was How the Grinch Stole Christmas was uh, the highest uh, grossing movie in 2000. But worldwide, it was actually Mission Impossible 2. Not the best Mission Impossible, but still. I mean, Tom Cruise climbs a rock and, you know, makes a lot of people feel a lot of things when he does that. Good looking boy there. So. All right, gang, um, we're going to take a quick break. I'm not going anywhere, but what I would love to do now is to have everybody in the chat who won, um, I need your Venmo or I need your PayPal, or we can do it at the end. I don't really care. Let's let's try it now. Uh, so Peggy, going to go with you first. What do you, uh, Peggy Gubins, what is your Venmo or PayPal? Which way do you want to be, which way do you want to be paid? Let me know. Probably definitely should have done this at the end, but the end of the whole vid, but we'll see, because stay tuned, guys. There's more trivia to come. Um, just uh, So everybody who won, as a matter of fact, who won anything, Clint, Peggy, the great merman, um, everybody who won something, give me your uh, give me your stuff here. All right, let's see. Okay, that's a, that's a Venmo there. All right, waiting for more uh, correct answers to come in. Um, gotcha, gotcha, Peggy. Okay, Ryan Kramer. Uh, and you guys got some, you guys got some tough, tough names. So, what does anybody else want to talk about? Uh, I don't know what's going on with this dog, man. She's eating, she's eating everything, like literally everything. At MYM Okay. Got that. Uh sorry <laughs> sorry guys. I know this is not the most uh exciting um part of the show, but hey, we're figuring it out. And that is a Venmo. All this damn money I gotta give away. Uh, I have a question. What are those me.com accounts about? I need to get one of those. Do I need to get a me.com account? Okay. Uh, John Hoover, I guess I could send cash. I guess I could. Uh, Nick uh, Norambuena. 
My handwriting's horrible, by the way, so I hope I can read all this stuff. Nick. And that is... All right, guys. Almost done. Almost done. Got Clint's here. You guys are great sports. Thanks for hanging in. I appreciate it. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, great Merman. Totally cool. Y'all can DM me this if you want. Let's see. Okay. Uh, I don't even know how to kill time because I'm trying to. I'm trying to focus on getting everybody's thing right. Okay. Uh, I think, is that everybody? Did I get everybody? Still got Peggy's, got Great Merman's gonna DM me, and I need Gannon. Gannon, where you at, bud? Gannon? <laughs> Bueller? <laughs> Bueller? Uh, Gannon, if you can just let me know by the end of this. There you go. I, I see ya. I see ya. Man, you guys got some tough emails. And the goal with this is that um, I can go back and look at the chat and and then do it that way from now on so I don't have to like stop the show and do it. But I think I got everybody, so got everybody. Whew. All right, everybody good? Everybody good? Uh-oh. Okay, Kate Mulligan just texted me, guys, so. She maybe had one of these two. So we'll, uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that. Let's take a look at what Kate Mulligan texted me. Um, ah, oh, she's so sweet. She worries about my solo quarantine because, uh, she's homeschool quarantine because she's a family and I don't, but, um, I got a 28 pound nugget. I'm looking awful if anybody wants one. Okay. Um, <laughs> John Mariano is the halftime entertainment and he says with the reverse stream labs bar trivia competition, that's exactly the name for this show. The reverse schmobot. Does this mean the winners have to talk like a schmobot? Yes, everybody wins five bucks. You have to talk like a schmobot. But you don't do it to me. Do it to the next person you see, which may be in eight weeks. But do it to that person. It will, it will please me. All right, gang, here we go. Bar trivia, round number two. Virtual bar trivia. Anti-schmobot, or not anti, reverse schmobot. Okay, here we go. New round, new game, double the winnings. Just kidding. Five bucks for each correct answer. Here we go. Go. Which bicycle manufacturing company made a line of bikes called White Heat? Yeah, it's a good one. That's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> the, Peggy, the answer's not swamp, okay? <laughs> the answer's never the answer I'm never writing a question where the answer is swamp. I promise you. Okay, the uh, guess is coming in here. Um, waiting for a correct one. Clint DeFada got it. Morgan Chan, so close. You typed Husky, it's actually Huffy. It's actually Huffy, so Clint got that one. All right, Clint. Clint's back on the board, five bucks. Clint's tied with Peggy for uh, top score here today. Yeah, it was, remember, Huffy's got what's hot now. It was to We Will Rock You, but it was about Huffy's cool white heat bike. I never got one. My buddy Doug did. Doug, who some of you met in Atlanta. Doug uh, Doug got a Huffy white heat. Dude, our bill. That's the question. Which president is on the $2 bill? Now, this question's worth $5. So three more dollars than the $2 bill. Everybody knows this. You should know this answer because everybody had an aunt that gave them a $2 bill every year. For their birthday. Okay. <laughs> People are just guessing before <laughs> before the question, just in case they get it right. Uh, all right. I, I told you guys I need I need both names. I need both names. All right. Uh, you you got it. It's Jefferson. Zachary Grayson. I need I need the first names too, guys. Zachary Grayson. I'm giving it to you. You get it. Zachary Grayson got it. Thomas Jefferson is the answer. Zachary Grayson. 
Well done, sir. Well done. The answer is Thomas Jefferson. Um, uh, no, Jordan, it's not actually Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal is the president. Maybe right now it might take... I probably wouldn't... I don't know. I don't know. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Let's just not have Steven Seagal ever be president. Can we be fair with that? Okay. Next question. Oh, I just got a text from Dorena. Dorena, and I will read you her text after I ask this next question. So, question number three. Here it comes. What famous comedian co-starred in the film Superman 3? What famous comic Superman 3? Dorena wrote, Hey amigo, como estas? Meaning I will write her back once we're done here. Hi Dorena, if you're watching. Somebody tell Dorena that, that I'm in the middle of work. Okay. Eddie Haskell's on it, man. You're, you're crushing it, Ed. Okay. Where is it? Where's the correct answer? I see it's not Bill Cosby. It's not Dennis Rodman. It is Richard Pryor. Bobby G. Bobby G got it. The answer is the, the legend. Bobby G. Now, is that... Please tell me that's not Tom Dagnino. Am I giving you... Don't I give you enough money? <laughs> Bobby G got it right. Uh, yes, the answer is Richard Pryor. Not his best work, but he, he showed up. He showed up to play. Um, yeah, sorry, Kristen Smith. I know some people have these great internet connections. I don't even know if mine's that good. I do... Uh, I, what the hell is my... I think AT&T. They're okay, right? Right? Okay. Uh, question four. Question four. Coming down the pike. I like this one. What television series finale has garnered the highest ratings in TV history. So there's Super Bowls that more people watch than this, but this is the record for a TV show's finale. What's got the record for most people watching for the ratings? I probably could have ordered it cleaner, but you guys got it. <laughs> what TV series finale has the record for the highest watched finale of all time? There it is. Bobby, Bobby G again. Bobby G again with MASH. All right, Bobby G. And he en enters into the rare air occupied by Clinton Peggy, where he's gotten multiple questions right. The answer is MASH. You guys know how many views? 105 million people watched MASH. 105 million people. I, I have 200 people watching me right now. 105 million people. Whew. All right, so Bobby G, um, just for fun, you can still play, but uh, you are not eligible to win the next question. So we're going to give somebody else a chance because you're just too hot. You're just too hot, Bobby G. And you might actually be Finstock. And I don't want to give Finstock more than 10 bucks. So you can come back and play the following question. So here we go. Your fifth question. And it is. What future Saturday Night Live star appeared as a skateboarder alongside Tony Hawk in Police Academy 4. <laughs> it's a great, great, great question. This might have been a Schmodown Season 1 because Christian and I both knew the answer, so... Um, <laughs> SJT Original, I'm sorry. I'm not... I. Which, which one did you get right? Wait, tell me which one you got right. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just... I just want you guys to know I promise I'm not rigging it, okay? I'm doing what I see first, so... Um, okay, it's not Eddie Murphy. It's not still waiting. David Spade. Mike Brower got it. Mike Brower got it. Congratulations. Mike Brower. Got it right. The answer is, in fact, Mr. David Spade. He was a skateboarder, just a little kid up there in Canada. And uh, got booked the role somehow and got to skate with Tony Hawk. And look at him now. He hosts a TV show that I'm going to be on. Again, at once his TV show's back, I'll be on it. So, there we go. All right, guys. You're playing great. You're hanging in there. It's bar trivia. Got five questions left and a couple personal questions. So, so Langley or SJT Original, if maybe you guys will get the personal question. You guys know me pretty well, right? Okay. Which NFL running back goes by the nickname Beast Mode? Beast Mode. Which... NFL running back goes by beast mode. <laughs> Ed Harrell, I gotta, I owe you two steak dinners after after this man. You're doing a great job policing. Okay, which 
NFL running back. Goes by the name Beast. Marshawn Lynch is there, and Sean Avery has it. Sean Avery has it. Congratulations, Sean. Okay, Sean Avery got the Beast Mode question right, and now Sean has joined the rare air of Bobby, Peggy, and Clint. You guys all got at least 10 bucks. So, congratulations. Four questions remain. Somebody out there who hasn't won yet, maybe you're going to get five bucks sent your way. Maybe you get 10 bucks. Maybe you'll break the record and get 15 bucks. How would you get $13? Uh, and this is the first one. Can you believe it? Hmm. Uh, this is fun, guys. I'm having a good time. Hope you guys are enjoying it, too. Okay. This is my favorite question. It's my favorite question that I've ever written, Schmodown or otherwise. This is my favorite question. Chris Galiski, get ready. <laughs> In what decade was the brand Chef Boyer D introduced to the world? Not when the guy was born, but what with the brand Chef Boyer D. So, fun story. The guy's name was um, Biordi. What, what, it was a, it was a, he came from an Italian family. His name was something Biordi, and they just figured that Americans were too dumb to be able to get the Biordi, so they called it Boyordi. So, need the decade that Chef Boyordi was introduced into the world. Peggy Gubin strikes again. You are correct, Peggy. You're the first one to get the 1930s. Beefaroni came about in the 1930s. So, Peggy, $15 coming your way. That's enough for... You're getting some toilet paper. You're getting some fruity pebbles. Get some good stuff there. You can spend on whatever you want, but that's what I would do. <laughs> or buy Chef Boyer D. You should, you, should, you should buy Chef Boyer If you got the Chef Boyer D question right, you should buy some Chef Boyer D and send me a picture of it. I haven't, I haven't had Chef Boyer D in a long time. Um... Good question. Good, good guesses, everybody. Good question. Pat myself on the back. Okay. Got three questions remaining. And only three questions remaining. And then we get to the personal stuff. It's not dirty. It's just, you know, personal stuff. Okay. This one is going to go fast and furious. So, Ed, prepare yourself. What rapper is featured towards the end of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. It's a classic bar trivia question. Classic. This is the one that, like, if we were all in a bar together, we'd all be, like, high-fiving and, like, doing the ninja rap and stuff. But um, but we're not. We're um, we're sequestered. Yeah, Kristen Smith. I did. Peggy's just got that internet. Got that internet down. Should be broadcasting from Peggy's place next time. Vanilla Ice is the answer, and Bobby G has it. Vanilla Ice. Bobby, I almost wrote Vanilla Ice for your name, Bobby G. Bobby G got it. Got Vanilla Ice for anybody else. So now Bobby G and Peggy each have three correct answers. Bobby G's got three in this round alone. So, well played. Well played, sir. I doff my backwards cap to you and Peggy. Two questions left. Which beer company used the slogan, tastes great, less filling? Which beer used the slogan, tastes great, less filling? Ah, this is one of those ones you probably could have typed ahead and gotten lucky on. But we'll see. We'll see. Hit me in Houston just guessing stuff, and I love it. Uh, it's not Coors. It's not Coors. It is not Coors. Reverend Jim got it. Reverend Jim got it. Reverend Jim guessed Miller. And yes, I said beer company, so Miller is the company. Reverend Jim got it. Well done, Reverend Jim. Okay, Reverend Jim with $5. Uh, yeah, Miller I used to have those ad campaigns. Tastes great, less filling. And when uh, we went to Bush Gardens, the amusement park, um, they had this ride called Da Vinci's Cradle. And when every time it actually, no, there was a battering ramp. They had the battering ramp. You ever been on a battering ramp? They go back and forth like this. So there's people here and people here. And it goes, whoosh, whoosh. it's very, very, it makes you queasy. But so it'd swing up here and people would yell, taste great. Then it come down here and we'd yell, last filling. And we're like, what does beer taste like? Okay, last question for round number two. And then a couple more bonus ones that are of a personal nature. Here we go. 
your tenth and final question in round number two. Which race car driver has won Daytona 500 the most? Give you a hint, this person has won it seven times. Seven times. This person has won the Daytona 500. So here we go. Here we go. JJ Winward furiously DMing me. What did I what did I do, JJ? Okay, it's not Dale Earnhardt. It's not Dale. Terry Lovell. Terry Lovell got it. It is Richard Petty. Richard Petty. The king! The king! Richard Petty. Sunglasses. Hat. Richard Petty. Who got it? Jim Lovell? Was, that <laughs> Was it Jim Lovell? Jim Lovell. Isn't that the astronaut? Jim Lovell? Uh, Terry Lovell. There we go. <laughs> Jim Lovell, the astronaut, who successfully got Apollo 13 back to Earth. Terry Lovell got it right. All right. Congratulations to all the winners, to all the people who were runners-up. Um, hey, yeah, everybody everybody uh, tried a lot of correct answers out there. It's just whoever comes up first on my stream, and that's who gets the five bucks. And again, you're playing for five bucks, all right? So let's not, let's not freak out. And this, it's not as valuable as, say, paper towels right now. So let's, let's, let's just all we're, – we're still all in this together, gang. So what I need from – um, your Bobby G's of the world. Uh, anybody who won in round two, I need you to quickly in the comment section um, type in your Venmo or your PayPal, whichever method you prefer to get your payment in. Go ahead and type it in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, congrats, Terry. You are now an astronaut, so congratulations. And um, then we'll have a couple more questions that are also going to be worth five bucks that are about me. So see if you guys can uh, can get that one. Um, Ryan Kramer, yeah, Cole Trickle would have been a good, would have been a good answer. So, um, uh, oh, Hotel Nerd wanted to donate it to charity. So, well, be a little quicker, and we'll we'll, we'll take care of that charity for you, bud. Um, okay, so I need uh, Bobby G. Got your Venmo. Oh, good. So we have confirmation that Bobby G. is not Bobby Gucci. So that makes me feel good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Zachary Grayson, gotcha. There we go. Gotcha. Okay, who else are we looking for here? Oh, boy. And if you are not uh, one of the winners, but you want to comment anyway, tell me what did you do today? What was the highlight of your day? Likely staying inside. What was the highlight of your day? Tell me. What do you got? Okay, still looking for Reverend Jim, and I need Reverend Jim and Mike Brower are who I need. Reverend Jim and Mike Brower. <laughs> oh, Ed Harrell, He's earning himself all sorts of perks. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Zachary. Appreciate the DM. Okay, looking for Reverend Jim and looking for Mike Brower. I see you, Mike. Okay, gotcha. I won't spam you, bud, I promise. Okay, and last one, looking for... Uh, looking for Reverend Jim. Where you at, Jim? Uh, or Reverend Jim, just drop it at the end of the... Okay, so the Great Merman said that um, with with his day, got the cans of crushed pineapple at Target. They were hidden in the back of the shelf. Angelica Wilcox recycled her glass. That's cool. Um, Garrett Farney got to see the joy of Josh getting his new clubs. Yeah, I heard you helped Josh Bakuga get his new golf clubs, so... Congrats. Um, Samantha Mendoza said, bake some bomb keto cookies. Okay, keto. Tough thing to stay on in, in this day and age. John Loff, it was your son's 10th birthday. Well, happy birthday to, to your son. Hope it was a good day. Uh, Kevin Marquez said, uh, you read a lot. I'm not sure what reading is. Um, and watched Avenue 5 on HBO. Any good? Yeah, your neck. 
Uh, Hotel Nerd, I'm kind of with you. I watched the coverage of NFL Free Agency all day because it made me feel like a normal human being, and that was a lot of fun. Um, Okay, so here we go. Last phase of Mark's virtual bar trivia. Um, (laughs) Kyle (laughs) Harlow stuff. It's a good guess. Okay, so I need two personal questions. Molly, you got a good one? Okay, I'll, I'll give you the first one. Um, <laughs> okay, and this is, I'm being honest here. Just as soon as you think you know it, comment. What is my current waist size? What is Mark's current waist size? What is my current waist size? I won't be offended, just guess away. Not going to be offended. Just guess what my current weight size is. I know what it is. I measure it just about every week with the the gym I go to. So, <laughs> okay, fine. Maybe maybe I will be a little offended. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Oh, SJT original. You got it. SJT original. First one. It's 32. I mean, I look like it's 32. I get surprised when they measure it, and it's 32. But it is 32. So SJT original. Uh, you got that one. SJT Original. Got that one. Okay, so SJT Original, you're getting five bucks. So, I saw a lot of 36s in there. And yes, I I might own 36 pants just in case, but as of right now, now in a couple weeks, maybe back to 36. Alright, the last one. And then we'll wrap things up here. The last deeply personal question. What is my favorite number? What is my favorite number? I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this on shows once or twice. What is my favorite number? Well, Samantha, thank you for guessing that my waist size was 32. For I didn't see you first, but I'm sorry. I, I got SJT original, so. Okay. Uh, no, Carol, just because you guessed a lower waist size than 32 doesn't mean you win. Uh, the answer is not 69. Sorry, seeing a lot of 69s, a lot of 7s. It's a good guess, but no. I'm looking. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I still don't see it. Oh my god, they're coming in so fast. Okay, I think I saw it. Okay. Okay, somebody got it right. Somebody got it right. Carol, that's a great guess. Carol guessed 5150. It's a good guess, but no. And the answer, and I believe the first person to get it right was ladies and gentlemen, one time I did a show in Iowa and he brought me a Clinton Portis Redskins jersey that was nine sizes too big. Mr. Kyle Harlow got it because the answer is 22. Kyle Harlow gets it. 22 is my, 22 is my favorite number. 22 is my favorite number of all time because Randolph Childress wore it. The greatest basketball player in Wake Forest history. Yes, including Tim Duncan. Um, Fun fact, uh, my dad wore 22. Uh, that was his high school football number, and I wore 22 for my high school basketball number. And right before senior day, my dad came up to me and he's like, "Hey, I just wanted to tell you how how much it means to me that you would wear my number you, while you're playing basketball." And that looked at me, I was like, "You were number 22. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing it for Randolph, I, you know." But now that it's you know now now it's just that's our family number. So there you go. Okay, you guys are fun. Let's do one more. One more for the road. Um, let's see. <sighs> something. What's something personal about me that I can ask about? Okay. Here we go. Last question, and then we'll call it a night. Back in the mid two thousands, my first big gig that I booked in L.A was on a prank show called MTV's Punked. Who was the first celebrity that I punked? That's a $5 question. I gave away $115 here tonight. I probably shouldn't have, but I did it. And I had a lot of fun, so hopefully we'll, I'll reassess. I'll get my sheet of notes from Ed and John. <laughs> and then we'll see. And then we'll see. It was not Tony Shalhoub. Uh, Nick and Norris Infinite Playlist. Well done, Ryan. Well done. 
Uh, first celebrity I punked. Coming down. It was not Christian Harloff. Sorry, hotel nerd. Here we go. First celebrity that I punked. I definitely did not punk Ashton Kutcher. Um, still haven't seen this celebrity. It's a, it's a she. Here we go. Still waiting. This is around 2005, 2006. Hayden Panatera was one of them, but not the first one. So great guess. Um, I'm not seeing it. Somebody, somebody out there. Five dollars. We're just we're laying it out there. Michael Campbell. The fast fingers of Michael Campbell got it. The answer was Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale was the very first celebrity that I punked, and it was not an easy day. It was a it was a rough shoot, but we did it, and she was very nice, as was Michael Sheen, who was an accomplice in the punking. So Michael Campbell got it right. All right, so uh, to wrap things up, all I really need from uh, the three gentlemen who won the personal questions, give me your Venmo um, PayPal, whatever y'all want. Uh, so I'm looking at you, SJT, Kyle, Harlow, and Michael Campbell. And in the meantime, I think we should do this again. What do you guys think? This would be a lot of fun. So uh, I'm thinking like we could do like specific topics even, um, like get everybody to go research something and then we can come back and do questions about that. However you guys want to do it. But we can also just do bar trivia like what we did tonight. So I would love y'all's feedback. And I would love for y'all to tell your friends about this. And, you know, maybe if you get a slightly better host or maybe the host practices what he's doing, it can flow a little bit smoother next time. Um, any notes that you guys have for me, I would love to hear in the comment section here, uh, in the comment section once this vid goes live. If you want to tweet me, Instagram, whatever you guys want to do. This is what we're doing for a while, gang. So let's get used to it and let's all be supportive of each other. And if I missed your name and you were the first person to get a question right and you missed out on five bucks, I'm sorry. But you got an hour's worth of entertainment from yours truly, Mark Ellis. So um, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm going to check the DMs afterwards for uh, for SJT Kyle and Michael Campbell. Or uh, hit me up. Um, uh, just, just tweet it at me. So tell me all that stuff. And because you guys were such a good audience, not only will I give you guys one more sip. Right, here, you guys want to finish your beers? Who out there has a drink? Who out there has a drink? Okay, get your drink ready. And then while you're getting your drink ready, I'm going to show you what I'm looking at right here, which is the cutest beast in all the world. You guys, can you guys see her? You guys see that nugget? Look at that. That's what she thinks of me. So, <laughs> all right. Salut, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Eye contact. Ah. <sighs> I've tried to brew like that in a while. That felt good. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, have a good rest of your evening, and I'll check in with you all soon. And let's do this again. Maybe we'll do it later this week if I can come up with some more money, or we'll maybe do it next Tuesday or whenever. But I'll announce it. I would say the first trial run was a success. Thanks to y'all. You're the best fans in the world. You're some of the best people in the world. Take care of yourselves and each other from a safe distance. See y'all later. Have a good night. Dance the night away.